What's up, guys? Nick Divine and Divine83 over on Instagram. We're going to do another advanced build tutorial. We're going to do the Suka build. Um, the Suka build is an original concept by Blue Eye Goon. And before I even get into it, I just want to let you know just be careful when attempting this build. It's been known to cut people's fingers because you're dealing with the ribbon. You're going to be clapping with ribbon, twisted ribbon, and if you're not careful, you can cut yourself with this ribbon. Um, other than that, it's a, it could be a fairly simple build to do, but once again, original concepts by Blue Eye Goon over on Instagram. Um, the concept, there's two different ways to do it. There's the more known way of doing it where you just twist the ribbon and there's the what I call the old school way which is probably the way that it was um it was thought up um, is actually Allen using the ribbon wire and Allen alien that's hard to say alienning anyway you alien with the ribbon wire and then use that decor to go over your cores. So I'm going to do both ways. Um, the first way is going to be the way that's most known and that's just the twisted wire over top of your cores. Uh, I usually do these over frame staples. Most of the time you see them over frame staples but really with the Suka you can do any kind of core and then just twist appropriately to them cores. So um, I already got some frame staples prepped. If you don't know how to prep frame staples, just go over to my frame staple tutorial and it'll show you how I prep my frame staple staples. I'm going to go close up on this one just to show you what I got going on and to show you what we will be going around. And then after that, we're going to use some stainless steel 0.4. Got a little bit of juice on it, I guess. Some stainless steel 0.4 ribbon. We're going to twist it up. I'm going to show you how to get this suit going here. Okay, here's my frame staple prep. I basically have six pieces of ribbon. It's actually 0.5 ribbon and 26 gauge frames. Okay, so next thing you're going to want is you're going to want a strong clamp. You're going to want your drill. And you're going to want something like this. So I got bobby pins here. I like to have two when doing my sukas. But as long as you have something like this, once I show you how I use them, you can kind of use your imagination and make your own. Or you can make it out of 20 gauge. Or you can just get these. If you have a female in your house, or if you are female, you probably have these laying around. I do like to cut the little balls off of here. Just cast straight these things right here. Boom. At least on one of them. And this is going to be able to go into my drill chuck. All right. And this is just going to make my drill a little easier to hold that ribbon instead of putting it in my chuck. That ribbon's very thin, so this just helps a lot. So I'm going to tighten this down in here. All right. Now I'm going to get my .4 ribbon. All right. And I'm just going to get out. I'm going to go one time around the spool and let the spool hold it here. I'm going to take this end 
put it through my bobby pin. Bend it over. Then I'm going to take my needle noses, hold it, and twist the bobby pin a couple times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to clamp it to something sturdy. So basically, so basically this is my swivel setup and I have a little block on here that holds my spin LT. So I got my spool of ribbon, and then that bobby pin that's attached to the end. I'm going to put that here, and I'm going to clamp this down here. And that's going to hold one end of my ribbon. Okay, now I could take my spool and I could unspool it. And I'm going to unspool this at about six feet. Okay. After I unspool it at six feet, I'm going to cut it. So I have the other end of the ribbon right here. I'm going to get my drill and I'm going to do the same thing to this bobby pin. I'm going to put the point four through it, bend it over. Put my drill in the forward motion. Hold the piece of ribbon, loop with my needle noses, and twist. Alright, now it's attached to both sides. So when you're ready to twist this ribbon, this is going to be the most important part of the suka coil. You're going to want to get it in both ends on your bobby pin. And I don't even stretch the ribbon to make it straight. I just roll it right off of the spool and attach it to the drill. When I twist the ribbon, I pull tension on it. I'm guessing that that slack that's usually in ribbon when you stretch it to straighten it out, I'm guessing that comes out anyway, but I just don't stretch it before I, before I twist it up. And then I just roll my spool out to my drill. I'm going to want my drill sitting on something because when I go to cut this ribbon, I need, the, I need both hands to cut it. So I'm going to take my ribbon and I'm going to cut it even with like the back of my drill. Alright. So I got my .3 ribbon here. So now I'm going to get my .3 ribbon and I'm going to put it through the bobby pin on my drill, bend it over, hold it. My drill's in the clockwise rotation. And get it on there good. Now I can bring my drill back to where I had it.
And I could have made this a little tighter for myself. I usually don't bring it up to a camera to show. So usually I just leave my drill here. Right where I'm going to be sitting it. Pull the ribbon tight through the bobby pin and then do the spin. Alright. Now, I put my drill on high speed and I'm just going to twist it up. Holding tension back. So, the more you hold tension, the better it's going to twist. When you twist something like wire, it's not going to twist evenly from here to here. It's going to start in one spot, and that one spot's going to be the tightest spot that you have pulled. So you want to pull nice, even tension. You want to have good tension on this while you're twisting. So I pull it back pretty, you know, pretty hard, enough to just make the whole wire, you know, almost like a guitar string. could actually see when the twist gets even if you have some good lighting and something on your table to contrast the color of the wire now I just get it to where it looks like it's going to fit around my stack keeping that tension on there. I think this looks good. So I keep the pressure on my drill. Now it's sitting on the table. I pinch the wire about an inch away from the drill chuck and pinch it good. Don't let it spring back. Cut the ribbon and now let it recoil in your hand slowly. And if you do this, you're not going to get any wiggly lines if you hold the tension and then you hold it while the recoil. The whole wire is twisted evenly without any curls in it. I got about five feet here. That should do more than a single coil. Alright, here's what I got. As you can see, the point three is much smaller than the point four. 0.1 millimeter is a big difference when you're dealing with wires. So I think this is going to be the twist that I need, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, so now before I get this attached to my stack here on the drill, I just wanted to uh, point this out. If you have two drills, this is a big advantage with sukas. So let's say I start this and it's just not twisted enough. I could hook this drill up to the end, the other end of the ribbon and twist it a little more. It's something I use a lot with sukas if they're just not twisted enough. You should always under twist it because you could twist more. You want to really try not to over twist it. I'm going to attach something to this video to show you what happens when you over twist it and what happens when you under twist it. What, what kind of look out for. So now I got my 0.3 nichrome ribbon. I'm not going to put this around my spool. I'm going to do this just by hand and just be careful. Okay, so I'm going to take my 0.3. I'm going to wrap the beginning of it around one of the pieces of 26 gauge sticking out of my drill. And now put my drill in the reverse position. You could do either or. I just I like going in the reverse of what I twisted. But you could really do either. And now when you're doing this suka, holding a lot of pressure is key. 
that's why so many people cut themselves with this is because you do have to hold a lot of pressure when fusing these there's going to be one part of the video I show you guys where as I'm doing the suka you could actually see the wire bending down because of how much pressure I'm holding now looking at this I just need a little bit more of a twist in my wire. So I'm going to hook it up to the other end of my drill. This drill closes up pretty good so I don't need the bobby pin. drills in the clockwise motion and twist it kind of snapped back there but that's okay so now let's see how I got it it's good to figure out how the twist is while you're still in what's going to be the lead especially if you're using the two drills. Now when you clapped in anything, alien, sukas, regular wire, when you're twisting it around, this wire is always twisting and it's good to just let it twist. Don't hold it, let it twist because if you hold the suka, it's going to twist a different amount and it may mess you up. So even if you have to let go sometimes to just let it twist the way it's got to twist, do that. Once you got it, you can pick up speed, keep the pressure on. So the lead that you put on Suka wire is a lot like the lead you would put on an alien coil. I've been noticing while I've been doing this tutorial that I've actually been more successful 
in the forward in the same motion I twisted it I've been more successful doing the suka like that usually it's the opposite usually I'm better at twisting my wire in the clockwise and suka in the counterclockwise but all my successful sukas during this tutorial which I've been having a hard time with this tutorial because I just haven't done too many sukas I've done a lot but I just it's not a build it's not a go-to build for me so I've just been learning also as I do this so all the successful sukas I've done in this tutorial I've twisted it clockwise and wrapped it clockwise but whatever works for you some people are different but I've just noticed that doing this tutorial all my successful ones I twist clockwise and wrap it clockwise now you also might want to try twisting it counterclockwise and wrapping it counterclockwise another thing I've noticed is nichrome sukas this way with the twisted wire the twisted ribbon nichrome is a lot harder to do because I think it's because it's just a softer wire I'm more successful with canthal stainless steel than I am nichrome and I think that's just because of how soft the wire is um, people do them with nichrome so it's definitely possible I've done them with nichrome I just think it's easier with canthal and stainless steel this way is so good okay so here's the point three ribbon suka as you can see it's got much lower of a profile than the point four this is going to vape better and look better after it's all wrapped up eight pieces of ribbon two frames point three twisted wire over top Okay, so here it is all wrapped up. And there it is next to the point four ribbon suka. Now I'm going to show you the old school way of suka, but the old school way of suka has been, it, there's kind of been a resurgence of it. Um, it almost looks like a double suka. It's almost like an enigma suka. So it's basically got two twists going through the, um, the stack. So it looks like it's double twisted, but it's actually just alien wire with ribbon. So it's an alien suka. And that's how the suka was made. Uh, Blue Eye Goon would do alien wire with ribbon. And that's why I call it the OG suka and a couple other people call it because it was actually the first suka. And then people just started trying to twist the wire to get it around their stack. So with the twisted suka, it's easier to hone in on your stack. With the alien suka, you kind of have to do the math. You have to figure out what cores you need for what D core. So right now I'm going to use the same cores which is eight pieces of ribbon and two 26 gauge frames and I'm going to use a 24 gauge D core because that is what you would use to alien around this stack. Alright, so eight pieces of ribbon, two frames that are 26 gauge, 
and I'm going to use a 24 gauge decor. Now also with the sukas, .2 ribbon is very hard to twist to get this kind of suka, the twisted suka. But with the alien suka, it's a lot easier to use .2. So if you wanted to use .2, I suggest doing the alien suka. It's just really hard to twist. Point two evenly. I've tried it a couple times. I've never been successful. I've seen other people do it, like Pro B300, and uh, he's got it. But I don't know if it's the kind of wire I'm using. I'm not sure. But with the Alien Suka, you could use point two. All right. So I got some 24 gauge here. Twenty four. It's going to go on my swivel, bend the 90, go in my drill, and to do this alien suka, like I said, I'm going to use some .2. I got .2 nichrome here. I'm going to get that .2 nichrome. I'm going to get it inside the drill chuck, put my drill in the clockwise rotation. And I'm just going to clap in this 24 gauge with the point two. So I'm shooting for a single coil. So about seven inches of a Clapton should be plenty good enough. I'm at about six. I left on about two inches and cut it off the spool. Now I'm going to put my drill in reverse and loosen up this ribbon clapton. It's moving freely up the 24 gauge. Loosen it a little more. Then I could cut the 24 gauge and slide that ribbon clapton right off. So here's a decor. Now I just gotta get my ribbon stack or my guts onto my drill and onto my swivel. I'm just using the second half of what I did that three or that point three millimeter suka. It's in my drill. Keep my drill in reverse. And now I just got to stretch my ribbon. Just like always, I'm going to clamp the end of my decor to my table. Hold this end. I'm actually going to hold it with some needle noses. And pull back and stretch. Whatever you do, make sure you don't overstretch it. All right, and so um, I'm starting halfway. I have a couple attempts on here of, of this uh, alien suka, and it just didn't go well, guys. Um, I ran out of point two rotation. trying it a couple times, 
and then for about an hour and a half after that I tried point three and that didn't work out either so I tried to get it on this video but now I just got to order some point two because I think that's just going to be the only way I'm going to get it is using point two um, I went and looked at other people's alien sukas and I seen a couple guys that uh they kind of prep their wire to almost like an enigma where there's like 12 pieces yeah, of ribbon, two the frames, angle, start slow and, make and sure then, stretches you know, they got their alien suka. But I even put a couple pictures of when I've got this build successful and, you know, I didn't have to do all that. It's, you know, I got it with the point two and I did it just like I would do an alien or a fralian. It's basically just alien with... Point two ribbon and it usually works but um also when I went back I seen that my stack wasn't really correct to be using 24 gauge and when I'm using 24 gauge I should have used two 26 frames and eight pieces of like point four ribbon and instead I used eight pieces of point three ribbon and 27 gauge frames and you can kind of even see it here that that alien is just a little too big just by the slightest sometimes you can even see that it's you know it's it's just about there and then it just messes up it just gets a little too big so here's my second decor this is my second attempt and you know I'm just fast forwarding through this and uh, hopefully somebody gets something out of it but once I get the point two ribbon, I'm gonna get this tutorial together, and I'll probably throw it together with something like the bandit, the bandit suka. So I'm about to be on attempt two here, and here it is. So it started, and then it just, it's just too big. So the wire's trying to catch up, and then I would get these good sections, and it just was still too big. So I just didn't have enough point two to get it done. And that really comes back to that enigma that I tried the other day, and I was using up all the point too. So that enigma came back to haunt me. But, um, you know, we'll get it done one day. This is what it should look like if it all came together. It's a cool looking wire. But, uh, sorry I couldn't get it on there, guys, but we'll get it. We'll get it. I got a couple pictures in here from my Instagram feed of a couple wires I did do with this concept in it. Here's one. It's spaced, but that's an alien suka, double twisted suka. That's the same wire colored up and coiled up. And then the next one is a hybrid, and you could see on the right there, that's the wire. Fuck you, suka. <laughs> Alright guys, enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, Here's the so reef what I'm coil. Gonna do here is I'm gonna put another sort of basic build in this video since I can't get the alien suka done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the coral or the reef coil. So the reef coil is another blue-eyed goon original concept, and it basically just takes ribbon wire you twist it to the max and you clapped in it around a fairly big core I'm gonna use 22 gauge core alright so I have some 22 gauge nichrome I already have it cut so I have 22 gauge nichrome that's gonna be my core and I'm gonna take some I was going to do 0.3, but I think I want to do some 0.4 nichrome. So I'm going to get some 0.4 nichrome. Here's some 0.4 nichrome. And I'm going to stretch out my arm's length, about six feet. And I'm going to give it a little tug. 
just to make the wire straight. Now I'm going to take one end of my point four, put it through the loop of my bobby pin here, bend it over, put the bobby pin in my drill, grab it with my needle noses. And twist. Now I'm going to take my drill, keep it in the clockwise motion, and then I'm going to grab the other end of my ribbon. I want to make sure that I can pull it tight. So with my drill in my right hand and the needle noses in my left, I'm going to pull all the slack out of the wire, pull it tight, and twist the wire. Right, got my drill in one hand, needle noses in the other. I'm pulling all the tension out. And I want to twist this to the max, uh, almost until it snaps. If you can get it twisted to the max without it snapping in the middle, that would be perfect. It would take a lot of practice to know when the max is though, so... Alright, it just snapped pretty much close to my drill. Alright, so I got a length here. It's not quite twisted to the max just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one end into my drill again. tension again and twist. You can see it's pretty much almost to the max now. It broke not so much in the middle, but that's why I did six feet because I only really need around three feet to get a single coil, which I'm going to end up doing as a stove top. All right, so I got almost three foot of a wire here. Now I'm going to get my 22 gauge. Put it on my swivel, bent to 90 in my drill. I'm going to keep the drill in the clockwise rotation, get that ribbon inside of my drill, and just start claptoning, making me tight clapton. You want that clapton wire really tight, no gaps. Let me get close up.
could always reverse and fix it. Okay, so I'm at the end here. I'm just going to keep the drill going in the forward. And then I'm going to pinch it, hold it tight, and twist it just to get it really tight. You want that clapton to be tight on there. You can also grab it with needle noses if you want and twist. Because this wire likes to recoil. Alright. Now before I cut it. I'm going to take the 22 gauge and bend it. Grab it with my needle noses, cut here, and bend this around so that clapton stays in place. I'm going to grab it from here, release the drill. bend this 22 over as well so if the clapton moves it doesn't move too far now let's make a stove top out of this so I just wanted to show you what this looks like before I make a stove top out of it it's a great wire to either make a stove top or to incorporate into other builds, maybe parallel it with something. You don't have to use 22 gauge. You could wrap this pretty much around anything. The smaller the gauge, the more you definitely want to twist to the max. Twist it until that ribbon can't twist anymore. these cool little designs in it like a spiral design holds a lot of juice okay now a lot of people ask me how I do stove tops stove tops don't vape that great but they look really cool and they're cool to shoot it's a great coil to make for them wires that you just don't know what to do with So I'm holding the 90 with my needle noses, holding it tight so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm just going to spiral this around. And you want to get them first couple wraps as tight as possible because there is going to be spring back. So you want to get them tight so when they're spring back, it's not too far from itself. You usually do two to three wraps on a stove top. This being the positive lead. And then you take it to whatever RDA you're putting it in. And you bend this lead back to where it has to go. So if you're doing it in like a four post, like a twist it messes, you can just bend it back just like this. And there you got your two leads. There's a stove top. Now when I was preparing to make this video, I made another reef coil stove top and I installed it in this HANA RDA. It's a postless RDA. So let me show you what both coils look like up close. Okay, here's the stovetop reef coil I just made. This is 0.4 nichrome 
over 22 gauge nichrome. And then here's the one I made earlier. And this is 0.3 canthal over 22 gauge nichrome. You see the cool spiral you get out of it. As much as I like how this one looks, I think I might mount the other one because it's nichrome. I'm going to get better colors. But we'll see. Alright, so that's it for this video. Sorry I couldn't get done the Alien Suka. I'm just out of point two, and I just think that's the best wire to use for this build. I tried over and over again with the point three, and I just couldn't get it. Um, it's a build I've done before. I'm going to attach pictures of this video of what it looks like when it's done. It just wasn't happening today. Um, but we got the Suka done. And I'm going to show you the coral reef. So that's two good beginner coils you can learn. And as soon as I get this alien suka, the wire to do it, I'm going to put the tutorial out. At least it'll be a shorter video and it won't be that long. But really, it's not a beginner coil. It's almost like an enigma. Um, it, it's just a tough coil to get down. And I just couldn't do it with the amount of point two I had. I had about. 25 feet of point two, and I just couldn't get it done with that amount. So um, I'm still going to leave the video in of what I did do of it because I still think that you can learn something from it. You still might be able to get this build done with what I showed you. It's just I can't show you the finished product of what I did during this video. Another video will be out this Tuesday. I think what makes sense is to do a Fralian and Fralian math or alien math because that's going to set us up for what's to come later on. It's just the smartest coil to do next. I'll see you. Thanks for watching and uh, thanks for the thousand subs. Um, Look out for the um, the um, build contest I'm going to have, the build off for the thousand subs, and uh, just thanks. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and stay tuned. It's over twisted. Okay, so it's naturally going to bend at the twists. All right, so as you can see. It's not twisted enough, so it's so big. <laughs>